Uh, here we have a document that is um, informational, and we've got a title up here, and we've got a number of sub headings underneath. And if I look at these as to what kind of text they are, I'll just drop the cursor in here. And if we go look, we're on the home tab. You can see it's Times New Roman 12 and bold. And if I look over here on the styles pane, I will see that this is normal text, basically like paragraph text uh, for Omni users. If you've seen paragraph text, you know what I'm referring to, but it's just standard text. If I click down here on this one, it's the same thing. This heading, the same thing. So because this is normal text, what it's going to do uh, when a screen reader user is um, listening to this document is it's going to just read it to them. It's not really going to indicate any titles or subheads. And so that's a standard thing that we all kind of do. Like a lot of us wrote term papers in school and whatnot. And for the titles and the subheads underneath subsections, we would just make that text bold and a little bit bigger. Um, if you're looking at it from a visual aspect, that makes perfect sense. Uh, someone who can see it is going to understand what they're seeing as a title or a subhead or what have you. Um, for a screen reader, it's a very different matter. Another thing is, is that because it's just going to read it straight through, if they need to, say, jump through the document to get to specific sections, it's very difficult for them to do that. In fact, they can't do that. They're going to have to listen to the document until they get to the section that they want to listen to. So by using headings in the document, we can make the document more easily navigatable. Um, a good example of this would be if you had a newspaper and you were reading the business news page, but the only uh, companies that you wanted to read business news from were, say, Apple and Microsoft, and you weren't interested in the rest, you would scan the business news page for headlines specifically relating to Apple and Microsoft and the rest of them you wouldn't read. You would know based on headline which stories you wanted to read. By setting headings in here, we allow screen reader users to do the same sort of search. Effectively, they can tab through the headings to find the specific uh, section that they're wanting to listen to without having to listen to the whole thing in bulk. So we want to set headings up. And you'll see here on the Styles pane, there are settings for Heading 1 and Heading 2. And if I were to take this text, which is the document title, and set it to Heading 1, Heading 1 is used for document title. And I just select it, you're going to see it makes it very, very ugly. It is set to Heading 1, but the default is this sort of blue text, and the spacing changed, and the formatting changed, and it just doesn't look good. Um, we want to set it to a Heading 1, but we want to retain the style it has. Can we do that? Yes, we can. So I'm going to select this text, and I'm going to go up on the Style pane. We have Heading 1 here. I'm going to right-click. And the first option is Update Heading 1 to Match Selection. So I'm going to select that. And you'll see that now Heading 1 looks like this text does. So it allows us to keep the look that we've already put in place without um, interrupting it with Microsoft's default style. Heading one is document title. And for subheads, subsections underneath, we would want those to be heading two. Uh, heading one basically is title. Heading two, think of it as chapter heading. If your heading one of a novel would be the title of the novel, your heading twos, the step under it, would be the titles of the chapters or the number, chapter one, chapter two, whatever like that. So that's what these are underneath. And we can see that they're just normal text. So once again, I can highlight them. And I've got a heading two here. I can right click and I can update heading two to match selection. Do the same thing for the one underneath it. And now I don't have to right click and set as. I can just click the heading two style. Now here we have a heading that doesn't look like either the title or the subheads. It's a completely different sort of size and style. Uh, this is something to be mindful of as you're working through the document. Um, try to keep stuff uniform because the thing is, is I can try to set it as a heading two, but it's going to try to force that style on it. Um, so in this case, 
and might set it to heading two style. Just to keep it contiguous style wise. And these are obviously subsets underneath that. Um, but it's a list, so it should be fine the way it is. Uh, headings work in sort of a descending pattern. You've got the heading one here. Of course, you'd follow that with heading two for chapters or for the different sections. If you have a subsection underneath a heading two, it would be heading three. Like, for example, you had an infographic with its own title or a, or a table with its own title. That would be a heading three for that title. Um, you can use headings uh, down in that order. You can follow a heading with a heading of the same type. A heading two can be followed by a two. Um, you can follow a heading with a heading one step down. A two can be followed by a three. You can follow a heading with a heading any number of steps up. So, for example, if you did have a heading three, you could follow it, say, with a one. You could go that far back. Um, the one thing that is considered an accessibility error if you're uh, applying headings is skipping steps on the way down. So, for example, if this was a heading two and the next one under it was a four, that would be considered an accessibility error, and it would more than likely show it in the uh, accessibility review tab. So by using headings, you will um, enable screen reader users to navigate your document far easier.